My name is Dr. Danny Tolman. I am a physical therapist who specializes in the treatment of vertigo and vestibular dysfunction or dizziness imbalance. I wanted to take a moment today to talk about BPPV, a very, very common condition that causes the symptom of positional vertigo. I spend a lot of time with my patients in the clinic educating about BPPV because the more you know about it, the easier it is to understand it and to also potentially help treat yourself at home if need be. So let's dig right in. BPPV stands for benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. So in theory, it's not super serious. It's not gonna harm you, in theory. Uh, it happens suddenly with changes in position and you get this false sensation of movement when there isn't movement. Everybody experiences dizziness and vertigo differently. For some people, the world may spin round and round in different directions. And for other people, they might just feel imbalanced or like the room shifts. If there's any time that there's an inappropriate feeling of movement when there shouldn't be movement, we term that vertigo. A really important thing to keep in mind is that vertigo is not a diagnosis. Vertigo is a symptom. Along with other symptoms of beep and BV, you can have imbalance, nausea, sometimes vomiting, uh, lightheadedness, and just a general sense of feeling off or uneasy. This is actually a very, very common condition, and the prevalence of this actually increases as our patient population starts to age. The reason for that are these little crystals inside your inner ear, or your vestibular apparatus. That inner ear is not where you can put a Q-tip in your ear canal. It is not in your middle ear where you get fullness, drainage, eustachian tube dysfunction, or where your hearing organs are. It is inside your skull encased in temporal bone. And it's actually made up of two different components. The front end of that organ is your cochlea. The back end of that organ is your vestibular apparatus, which is responsible for telling you where you are in space and if you're moving in space. So on that back end of the vestibular apparatus, you've got a multitude of different sensors in there that have different jobs. The first type of sensors are called your otolith organs. These are small jelly bean looking like organs that are sensors coated in this gelatinous jelly material and then covered in these crystals. We call them crystals because when you look at them under a microscope, they have an orthogonal look to them. But really, they're more similar to the makeup of limestone or bone. Whatever you're born with is what you've got. We don't grow new crystals throughout our life. We can't fortify them by taking calcium. So they age along with us as we grow older. And this can be a problem just because as similar to our bones as we age and how they become brittle and break down, so do these crystals. So here's an example of what these crystals should look like when they are young and healthy and they are still new to this world. But here's what they can look like as we start to age. You'll notice that they look porous and fragmented and there's these little filaments that usually hold them together on the otolith organs to keep them in place. They've got an important job. They tell you which way's up, which way's down, essentially where gravity is, and it kind of detects linear motion. So an example would be accelerating forward in a car or moving up and down in an elevator. So that is one half of that vestibular apparatus. And you'll notice on the other half, there are these network of little semicircular canals. These canals are little hollow tube-like structures that have an opening on one end and a sensor that dead ends it on the other. This little sensor kind of sways back and forth anytime we turn our head, not up and down, or tilt. Those semicircular canals measure angular acceleration. And this is important because when those canals are being activated, they are sending messages and communicating to all the little muscles around our eyeballs so our eyeballs can move within our head and keep our vision steady. A good example of what this is um, kind of working in the background of everything is in, when you're walking around um, and observing space around you. When you're walking around, your vision is nice and clear despite the fact that your head might be bobbing up and down from walking. You might be looking at different things, but everything stays nice and crystal clear, which is very opposite from when if you were to walk around with your cell phone and record a video and then try to watch it back afterwards, it looks miserable. And that's because your cell phone doesn't have a stabilizer in it, just like your muscles around your eyeballs do. So here's where all of this comes into play with BPPV. 
if those crystals flake off of those little otolith organs and kind of settle around in the utricle where they should be, when we change positions like lying down flat for long periods of time at night, those little crystals can sneak into those semicircular canals and kind of slowly build up. Think of like sand in an hourglass. It's not until one morning you go to sit up, you've reached a critical mass of crystals. You've got a buildup of these crystals, like a lot of them. It's not just one or two, it's a lot. These crystals build up in the canal. When you sit up, they start to sink like stones in water and move within those semicircular canals. And if they move and there's enough crystals in there, it generates a response. It inappropriately stimulates that semicircular canal to fire. So one ear is telling your brain that you're moving while the other ear is not. And what happens is a pattern of eye movement. This is called nystagmus. Each canal has its own very particular pattern of eye movement that will be generated every time you change position. So a lot of patients that have these crystals displaced, um, and everybody's a little different, keep in mind, but everyone that has these crystals displaced might feel symptoms when they first sit up out of bed in the morning. If they were to lie down in bed or roll over in bed at night, looking up really high for something or bending over low and ducking their chin. Um, examples of this might be getting something out of your cupboard, out of your closet, bending over to tie your shoes or pick something up from the floor, sitting up out of bed, lying down in bed, and you have these brief episodes of room spinning dizziness. The first time this happens is typically pretty um, debilitating and scary. Uh, many people end up going to the hospital because they think they're having a stroke or a heart attack and it's very hard to stay on your feet. Some people get very nauseated and vomit um, and this tends to improve mildly over time as your body gets used to it or as you start to participate in avoidance behavior. So instead of bending over, you keep your head level when you bend forward, or instead of turning your head quickly, you turn your whole body. Um, instead of looking up high for something, you'll use your eyeballs and reach. So we tend to avoid those symptom provoking positions. Now, the good news is, is that this, there is a very, very um, effective treatment for this condition. There are different ways that you can present with BPPV where those crystals can be free floating in different canals. They could be stuck to the little sensors that dead end the canal. But in general, if you can find a clinician who is specialized in diagnosing and treating this condition, there's a good chance that you'll be able to fix this at, at, in that moment. Um, I will say that BPPV tends to be managed, not cured. This is something that once you're prone to developing, this might be something that comes back periodically over time. And maybe this is something that you've experienced over a period of time. It's not uncommon for patients to come in and say, oh, I get this once or twice a year and typically around the changes in season and it's here for about two weeks and then it goes away on its own. And it's been like that for the last 20, 30 years. Um, having that cyclical pattern is actually very indicative of this type of condition. There are different things that might predispose you to developing BPPB. For example, if you've had any sort of inner ear dysfunction like Meniere's disease, vestibular neuritis, um, vestibular migraine, anything that can affect that vestibular apparatus, you are more prone to potentially shed crystals. And again, periodically, you know, over changes of season, um, allergy season isn't uh, um, too far of a stretch. Um, after recovering from a cold or a stomach bug, um, even if you develop an inner ear condition like vestibular neuritis, there's a good chance that you can actually develop BPPV as a secondary condition in tandem. The important thing is, is being able to get it I, properly identified by a clinician who can diagnose it and treat it. From there, once you have that identified, you can learn how to do maneuvers at home and treat when you feel symptoms come back up. Now, I do know that there's also a lot of YouTube videos out there, including the one that I created for patients at the beginning of COVID. Um, and you can absolutely look into those too. The research has shown that the effectiveness of treating yourself at home with only YouTube videos is only about 50-50. And there's a chance of potentially complicating the type of beacon BV case you have without diagnosis first. Now, with that being said, uh, if you were to go and check out my Epley video, you'll see that there's a quite amount of views and a lot of comments of people that found significant relief from that. And that is something that um, is 
absolutely amazing and wonderful, especially for those who might not have vestibular therapists in their area. Uh, it's definitely my recommendation first though, to get diagnosed so you can identify which ear is involved, which canal is involved, and which maneuver you can perform to help clear those crystals out. So in, I'm, I have my little 3D printed vestibular model here and I wanted to demonstrate what one of these little repositioning maneuvers look like. So here is our vestibular apparatus, all right? We've got our cochlea or the hearing organ, which is in the front. And then you can see the little network of different canals off the back. Those crystals uh, live right within this utricle here and they should stay there. But unfortunately, when we shed those crystals and we lie down flat at night, those crystals can drop into the opening of the canals and slowly collect. And when you develop enough crystals in those canals, when you go to sit up in the morning and those crystals move, you'll feel dizzy. So every time those crystals move, which is represented by this little ring here, you might feel that uh, symptom of beacon BV of whatever is independent to you, whether it's vertigo, dizziness, lightheadedness. Um, but that momentary feeling of, it, of that symptom is what you'll feel every time you change positions. So I'll demonstrate uh, an Epley maneuver, which is the most common type of maneuver for the most common type of beacon BV. This includes crystals being displaced in the posterior canal. The numbers in the literature change anywhere between 75% and 95% of pa uh, patients presenting with beacon BV having it in the posterior canal. So if you're Googling for uh, treatment for beacon BV, I guarantee you've come across the Epley maneuver. The Epley maneuver treats the posterior canal. And as you can see, there are other canals that there are other maneuvers to treat those canals. But what we'll do first is go over our Epley just to demonstrate how these maneuvers can replace those crystals back where they belong and remove the mechanical issue of what's causing your vertigo. So the inner ear organ sits in your head about a 45 degree angle, right? So it's not perfectly lined up with center. I'm going to turn this around. So we're looking at the back of somebody's head. If their nose is up here, and this is the center of their head, this sits about a 45 degree angle. What we do is we turn the head to the side that we want to test or treat, just to line that canal up parallel to gravity so that when you lie down flat, keeping your head turned, you can see those crystals move from the bottom portion of the canal to the middle of the canal. At this point, patients will feel dizzy and I'll be able to see their eyeballs dance around in a certain pattern to be able to diagnose which canal is being affected. From here, once those crystals settle, the dizziness should stop. So we wait for the dizziness to stop. We wait an additional 30 to 60 seconds. And that's because those crystals move pretty darn slow. And we wanna make sure all of those crystals get back to the center portion of that canal. So if you can imagine a snow globe and you shake the snow globe, all the heavy stuff settles first, but sometimes you get a little flakes of glitter or lighter material floating down slowly. So we hold that additional 30 to 60 seconds after those crystals settle down, after the dizziness stops to make sure that we've got all those crystals moving in the right direction. Now, in the next position of the Epley maneuver, we have the patient keep their head extended back, keeping their chin up, and we turn their head to the opposite side. Not a lot of movement of crystals, so not a lot of dizzy. But in this next position, when we have the patient roll on their side and tuck their chin, those crystals move out of the canal back to where they belong, causing maybe another burst of dizziness. And we see this as a good sign of a positive outcome. From there, once we wait for the dizziness to stop and you wait an additional 30 sec seconds to a minute, you're gonna keep your chin tucked and sit up on the side of your bed or table. By keeping your chin tucked, you're forcing those crystals to go back down to the utricle so that when you sit back up, the crystals are no longer displaced in the canal and they're going back to where they belong. So what if you tried this at home and you've tried the Epley maneuvers when you sit up, the room is spinning in the opposite direction. That would probably mean that you are unsuccessful in your treatment and those crystals are starting to fall back down into the canal, creating an opposite reaction, or you could have the wrong ear or the wrong canal. So this is where I definitely recommend seeing a clinician to get it diagnosed. If you go and see a clinician in the office who has training in vestibular dysfunction and treatment of BV, there is an 80% chance, according to the research, that they should be able to help you out that day, which does make it kind of feel like magic, right? Um, I hope this, this video was informational and helpful. 
Um, if you were to go into an office and someone tells you you have ear crystals and we're gonna roll you around to fix them, it might sound crazy, but it works. And the reason why it works is because it's a mechanical issue that is super common and easily fixable. Uh, we do encourage to have this fixed because if you leave those crystals displaced, you're more likely to have poor quality of life. Johns Hopkins did a study that found that you are three times more likely to fall if you have untreated beep and BV. And we want to avoid falls at all costs, especially as we're getting older. So if you have questions, uh, leave some questions in the comments and I'll hope to do a follow-up video with our frequently asked questions when it comes to beep and BV. Be sure to check out our home Epley Maneuvers if you want to give them a listen and give them a try. You can also go to vestibular.org and check out their provider directory if you want to find a vestibular specialist near you. Hope this was helpful. We'll talk again soon.